grade 6 math, number 3.3, decimals and fractions, add and subtract unlike fractions. Unlike fractions are fractions with different denominators, like one-third and one-fifth. A least common denominator, or LCD, is the least common multiple of two or more numbers. Remember, the factors are the numbers you multiply together to get the product, and the product is a multiple, okay? So, to add or subtract fractions, we need them to have the same denominator. To make them have the same denominator, we need to list their multiples and choose the smallest one they have in common. What's the big deal? Why does it have to be the smallest? Because the other ones will give us more work to do by making us have to reduce more. Bob needs to find a common denominator for 5 eighths and 3 fourths to add them. He knows he can just multiply them together to get a common 32. He doesn't care that it's not the least, it's the quickest. Just multiply them, right? That's what everyone says. So, 5 eighths and 3 fourths, what does 8 need to be a 32? It needs to be multiplied by 4. So 5 does 2. It gets jealous. It becomes a 20. 4 needs to be multiplied by 8 to become a 32, and the 3 gets jealous. It wants to be multiplied by 8, and it becomes a 24. So now he adds them together, and he's got 44 over 32. So he pulls a 32 over 32 out of it, because he knows that equals 1, and that's going to leave 12 over 32. So now he's got 1 and 12 over 32. He knows he can divide these two in half to reduce them. So he doesn't use the greatest common factor to reduce them. He just keeps dividing them into 2. So 12 divided by 2 is 6, and 32 divided by 2 is 16. Oh, yeah, needs to be reduced again. So he divides them by 2 again, and he gets 3 over 8. It took him from finding the sum, after adding them up and getting the sum, it took them one, two, three, four steps to reduce it to its lowest terms. Now, Tala used least common multiples. She listed the multiples and saw that they both could meet at 8's house, and it was the smallest number. So what does 8 need to become 8? 1. So 5 got multiplied by 1, and it stayed 5 eighths. The 4 got multiplied by 2 to become an 8, and the 3 got multiplied by 2 to become a 6. She just added the 5 and 6 and got 11. She pulled the 8 eighths out of it, which is a 1 whole, and had 3 eighths left and got 1 and 3 eighths. She did it in 2 steps. So Bob, it took him 4 steps because he didn't use the least common multiple or the greatest common factor to find the common denominators. He just multiplied them together and said he's going to wing it, and then to reduce them, he's just going to keep dividing them by two. He could have saved himself a lot of trouble if he had done it Tala's way. I don't know. Maybe he likes doing lots of math. I don't know. Anyway, by using any number, Bob created more work for himself. You've got to use the least common multiple to match the denominators, and then use the greatest common factor to reduce it to its lowest terms. All right? And I know that these terms can become very, very, ah, oh, what do they mean? So just think. You're going to try to find the smallest multiplication answer to match the denominators. And for the greatest common factor, just remember the factor is what you multiply together to get the multiple, okay? All right. To subtract 11 twelfths, uh, if you have 11 twelfths and you want to subtract 2 thirds, we're going to list the common multiples, and we're going to choose the littlest one, which is 12, so they can both meet at 12's house. Then we're going to rewrite it as stacked, and we're going to help them get to the house. 12 is already home. He's just multiplied by 1, see? So 11 is the same, too. But 3 needs to be multiplied by 4 to get to 12's house, and 2 gets jealous. He wants to come to 12's house, so he gets multiplied by 4, and he becomes an 8. So now we have 11 twelfths plus, or I'm sorry, minus 8 twelfths. 11 minus 8 is 3. We end up with 3 twelfths. We know that the greatest common factor between 3 and 12 is a 3, so we divide them both by 3 and get 1 fourth. So always remember that the numerator gets jealous and wants to be multiplied by the exact same number, okay? If it says to evaluate, 5 16ths plus y, and for y equals 1 fourth, 
we just plug the y in to the uh, equation and rewrite it as stacked, okay? So, we have our 5 sixteenths and our 1 fourth. We list the common multiples and realize they can meet at 16's house, so he doesn't have to move at all, does he? The 4 is going to come to his house. So, what does 4 need to become 16? It needs to be multiplied by 4 and the 1 gets jealous. So, it gets multiplied by 4. He's already home, so he's multiplied by 1 and stays the same. And, this is addition, so we're going to add the 5 and the 4 and get a 9. We get 9 sixteenths. Pretty easy. All right. Now we're going to add 3 eighths and 1 ninth. We quickly see that they can meet at 18's house. So 18's already home, so he stays 3 eighteenths. 9 needs to be multiplied by 2 to become 18. 1 is jealous, it gets multiplied by 2. And we add the 3 and the 2 and get 5 eighteenths. All right? Let's do a subtraction. 2 thirds minus 1 fourth. Whose house can they meet at? The smallest one is 12, because we don't want to do any extra work. They could meet at 24's house if you want to do more work. They could meet at even a bigger number's house, you know, like 120. Then you'd really do a lot of work. So they meet at 12's house, and we say, what does 3 need to get to 12's house? It needs to be multiplied by 4. 2 gets jealous, so he gets multiplied by 4. 4 needs to be multiplied by 3. 1 get, wants to get multiplied by 3, and he does. So now we have 8 take away 3, which is 5, and it's over the same denominator of 12. See, so the answer is 5 twelfths. So, don't be like Bob and don't create extra work for yourself, all right? Try to find the number, you know, list the multiples. It's no big deal to make a little list like this and just list the multiples. The multiplication answers the products, okay? Just list the products for both and see where they can meet. And when you're reducing it, try to find the greatest common factor they have. I always try putting the numerator into the denominator to see if it goes in evenly, because sometimes that's quick too. All right? So now you know how to add and subtract. Unlike fractions, we're going to do mixed numbers next. Okay? And you know sometimes when you're subtracting, the bottom fraction might be too big, and we might have to rename and regroup and borrow from a whole number. So we're going to do that, all right? See you next video. Bye.